I've been known as the youngest Neville brother, uh, lead singer for the Meters, uh, amongst other things, you know, but I mean, that's uh, just a few of the things that I've been into, that, but like uh, lately, and I'm a raw southern brother, and I'm the uh, voice of the Wetlands All-Star, you know, and uh, and when it all started off, I started off as uh, an apprentice drummer with Art Neville and the Neville Sounds, me and Zigaboo. So, uh, and sometimes we wind up playing half of the set. Smokey would play one half, we play the other half, you know, one of uh, them. And uh, then me and Zig and George Porter had a little thing that we did. Uh, at a place called uh, the, uh, the After Hours Park on Rampart Street. You know, not, like all of us was really too young to be in and everything, but you know, we had a couple other older guys in the band, and so you know, we got in. We were in junior high, you know, seventh, eighth grade, stuff like that. Yeah, for for twenty dollars and a fifth of old crow. <laughs> so. Uh, but I mean, it was an education, you know. I mean, you know, from the beginning, I, you know, and I didn't just want to play one instrument. I wanted to, you know, try to play as many of them as I could, you know. But the one that I, you know, I that really was drawn to was the drums. You know, you know, like me and me and Zig used to like follow my uncle Jolly everywhere. You know, it's like he used to walk around with a tambourine. He went, he went everywhere with that tambourine. Dressed to the nines, but with, with that tambourine. Matter of fact, like he would come by my mom's house, and instead of knocking on the door, he would pop the tambourine. Everybody would know it was him, you know. So, uh, and the rhythms that came from that whole Indian thing is like the basis for everything else, really, you know. Uh, and then. You know, like later on, getting to hang out with him with the Wild Chapel Tulis and going from one Indian practice to another in different neighborhoods and hearing the same songs we were doing, played and, and sung, but with a different kind of rhythmic emphasis, you know. In every neighborhood, it was like that. You know, so like just living in this gumbo kind of soaked a bunch of it up, you know. And, you know I don't know what kind of style you would call it, you know, just like, uh, I would call it Indian, that, that whole somatic right Indian thing, you know. Yeah, uh, in, that, in the living room on Valley Street, uh, Art rehearsed with his band, the Hawkettes. And, you know, it was like, uh, you know, not only the guys who was in the band, but then there was all these other musicians that was constantly in and out visiting. You know, so when I was a little kid, man, everybody, like, Dr. John, who, he wasn't Dr. John either, he was just Mac, and uh, Alan Toussaint, uh, you know, uh, Smokey Johnson, uh, and George Davis, uh, Alan Toussaint, just uh, James Booker, uh, Willie T, <laughs> you know, Deacon John, and uh, so that was on a weekly basis. And like I said, the whole neighborhood was, was like that. You well, know. you know, like I said, I was really uh, impressed when I first got to hear him, really experience hearing him sing. Uh, and uh, then when we, you know, he was out with the meters, they were touring with the Rolling Stones and doing all this great stuff that they were doing. And then when we came back and did the, uh, the Wild Chopper Tools thing and put together the band, yeah, it was like uh, his presence was really um, part of the heart and soul of the sound. You know, he had the, like, how did they put it? He said, well, he's got the fire. I think that Cyril Neville's voice, same as Aaron Neville's or uh, Armstrong's trumpet or, you know, the Professor Longhair and you know, his piano playing and all these different things. I mean, we can go on forever, all day long. The characters in New Orleans that are worthy of these special awards or, or recognitions. But Cyril is 
I would put him in one of the top ones. That voice and that presence of his, that stern face, that focus, it represents so much of the heart and soul of New Orleans. That's what I think. I look at him as, as yeah, New Orleans.